Best bit for a Monday, and um, it's Terry on his allotment when you mishear something. <laughs> and he, well, he I just was most surprised. <laughs> I was asking him some advice because the squirrels had eaten our sunflower seeds that we planted with the kids, those pesky, naughty squirrels, and I thought, I tell you who will know how to deal with those oh, pests. I mean, his, his um, remedy is really rather cruel. <laughs> strong fingers, yeah, though. Very strong fingers. Terry, can I ask you, we planted some um, sunflower seeds with the kids the other day and the squirrels came and dug them all up the next day. We were devastated. How do you stop naughty pests coming in there and digging your onions up? How do you stop naughty pests? You have to be very vigilant, Ollie. There's no way of stopping naughty pests. They are everywhere. What you've got to do is keep an eye out for them and the best method of getting rid of naughty pests are those two there, your finger and your thumb. And when you see them... If you like to crush them between there, I know it's a bit uh, dramatic, but crush them between there and you keep them, a pe you keep them at bay. Not, not, not do that. Organically, <laughs> there's no... Talking about, you're talking about, like, Little aphids, bugs. aphids and bugs and things. <laughs> yeah, definitely not squirrels, because they never, they never stay That's still strong, long enough for strong that. Strong fingers. <laughs> oh, you said squirrels. I missed the word <laughs> squirrels. <laughs> you said the squirrels are eating... The, no, you don't crush them between the finger and thumb, no! <laughs> I had a little blind spot, I thought you were, you were talking about pests in general, the little tiny creepy crawlies, not big gigantic things like squirrels, no! I've upset all half the country now by squishing squirrels. Well, best bit for today, um, I think it's been quite the year, and today is the anniversary of the day that Boris Johnson first put the entire country into a national lockdown. And it's a bit mad when you sort of reflect back and think about everything that's happened. Well, yeah, um, I mean, in our lives, but also in this room. Yeah. Um, when it was coming at us like a big wave about to break over the top of us, and what does this mean? What does yeah. this mean for all of us? And then it hit, and then we're locked down, then we're mm -hmm. separated. And, uh, and, and this, this room for me, um, this sofa, this team has, has been sort of the summation of that year, how we've all managed to get through well, this as a show. This sofa has been the only constant I could guarantee would still be here. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Best bit for a... What day is it today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday, it's Wednesday. I know, they all roll into one, don't they? <laughs> Wednesday. Um, this is something during yesterday's show... Yeah. In a commercial break, we've got the papers sitting up on the desk there, and you flicked, I think, to the front page of the Times yeah. and said, Talking dogs and cats, I, I want them on the show. I know, and you say these things out loud, and our brilliant team go and track down the dogs that talk. They were in America, and we spoke to Billy the cat, and we spoke to... Bunny. Which, Bunny the dog, which sounds weird, but we did sort of speak to them. They've got these buttons and things that they press. Well, seeing is believing, and I believe. Well, I mean, it, is, it was very convincing. Yeah. I mean, Bunny knows 90 words, and some of them are sort of not as easy to explain. How does that work? Well, for the emotional words, what I try and do is find a moment wherein she is experiencing said emotion or I am experiencing said emotion, like for concerned. Um, you know, she's in a, a state of heightened emotional arousal. That's a good opportunity for me to model the word concerned for her. Or, you know, if I'm really excited about something, um, I can use the concerned button for myself. And by modeling it in context, um, she'll, she'll pick it up. And she can, you know, if I model it in context with words that she already knows, that also makes it easier for her to build those associations. Well, she's also been able to tell you things. We've got a clip here of, uh, of her with a, a thorn in her paw. <laughs> Where is your ouch? Where ouch? In your paw? Let me see your paw. Okay, I'm gonna put this down and check. This was the stranger in her paw. She's got a mat between her ow toes and that's stuck in it. That's Which is, in itself, it? is, is extraordinary, she can tell, a stranger in her paw. I know, it's so clever. Today, Juliet Sear is joining us in the kitchen with her cream egg cupcakes and giant bunny biscuits. Phil's gone straight <laughs> in. Oh, gee, wowee. <laughs> That's not bad, guys. That's really good. That's not bad. That's really good. Oh, my legs are in the wrong place. <laughs> he's, 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 because he's, he's, he's further down. Your one's got further down to, to the egg, I think. Oh, yours <laughs> is really good. My legs are That's in the really wrong good. place. Yeah. See, see how simple it is. Check it out. Three different layers you've got here. The outer layer is a cream tiramisu milk chocolate. 
Uh, inside that is a black forest gato layer. And then that's got sour cherries in it. And in the middle, as if you hadn't had enough, is smooth and silk panna cotta flavoured white chocolate. Which and I only got go one for? of them, and it's still in the box. <laughs> Work my way in, I suppose. <laughs> there we go. And the, that's the... <laughs> lovely. Very what do you lovely. think? It's actually very nice chocolate. Yeah. Love it. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And only nine ninety nine from Lidl. I think that one's really that. good value, Absolutely. actually. Best bit for a Thursday, and we adore having Miriam Margulies on here because you never quite know what story <clears throat> she's going to tell. I don't think she's ever been on, and she's not been our best bit. Yeah, no, you, I think, you know, you're <laughs> she actually right. Is. And she said today she was holding back a wee bit as I well. Know, we were a bit you disappointed. Know, I was that. very disappointed. Like, right, next time, can someone not get to her first? Well, then you've got to start, like, sort of poking in with a stick <laughs> a little you bit, did. you know, to think, OK, well, come on now. We've, yeah, it doesn't take much either, her. does it? No, it doesn't. She went from being really refrained to talking about. Well, adults, yeah, it was a start of, of the, the Cadbury's, when she, she used to be the voice of the Cadbury's Caramel Bunny, um, <laughs> which has got a very, so if you remember, it was way back in the, what was it, the 80s, quite a deep sort of sexy voice this bunny and you wonder how it all happened didn't you didn't you get that possibly get that job out of a couple of um other tapes that you might have done before that were um slightly less family orientated <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought that I was supposed to be very careful this morning on He's this show. He's poking you with a big your stick, let me tell you that. Your chat <laughs> told me, now don't say anything nasty. So you I never did... say anything nasty, but you're always naughty and we love that. <laughs> well, I did a couple of sex tapes. Um, <laughs> Sexy Sonia leaves from my schoolgirl diary. That was, that was one of them. But I have to stress... <laughs> They were audio tapes. They were not visual. And they're very exhausting because when you're simulating orgasm, as all of you out there know, it's tiring and you get a headache. <laughs> it's not a question of having a headache at the beginning. You get a headache at the end. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I haven't done them again. I did, I did the, uh, the, the Cadbury's Bunny instead and made a lot more money.